Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. So I'm stoked on this video. We're gonna be editing audio using a really easy five-step process to process audio professionally, whether it was recorded on a boom mic, lav, whatever you're using, you can utilize this process for that. So if you didn't check out the previous video we posted on how to record audio professionally, do that first. But otherwise, let's get into this video right now. So I'm here with my good friend Wes, who is an audio professional. He is really good at this stuff. And that's why I also created this preset pack with him. If you didn't see that, we launched in the last video where we have a plus 50 preset pack with a bunch of already processed presets for your audio. And it's super valuable, but we're gonna break it down how we use this five-step process to get any audio to sound from not great to professional in editing. So the first thing I would do is always looking at your source audio, making sure it sounds good. And we just want to analyze it and say, what could we do to change this, to shape it, to make it sound better? And so the first thing I want to do when I, I jump in and I just, like I said, listen to it. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the... So everything sounds really good. It sounds like the miking placement was proper like we talked about in the other yeah. video. So important. So important. Okay, so now that we've analyzed our audio, what's the first thing you wanna like dive into? Like what, what are you gonna do next? First thing I would do after that is really looking at the EQ. I would grab a parametric EQ so that we can see the audio on the spectrum. And I'm listening for things that I wanna take away, any harsh frequencies that sound muddy, things that mud it up as well as maybe possibly adding more clarity if it needs it. And it's just overall to allow your voice to become uh, smoother and mm -hmm. more intelligible and uh, nice and pleasant to the ear. Okay. So by coming in here, I would grab the parametric EQ in here and I would drag it here. And first thing I would do is I would probably take out um, some extra low end that's not really going to be there um, in your voice. So. I'm gonna turn the high pass filter on and I'm gonna make it around 90 Hertz. And let's hear, you probably won't hear much, but let's hear what that sounds like. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background, while all that's- It's not doing a ton, but what it is doing, if you have a sub range frequency or headphones that you're listening on, you can probably hear it's just cutting out um, any sub range coming through, possibly some room noise, mm. that kind of stuff. Okay, cool. So what's next? Next thing I would do is add a little bit of high end, anywhere from five to 10K, and that's gonna add a little more clarity to your voice. Stuff is really important. Audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the- And that sounds really good. Yeah, I can hear it for sure. The next thing I would do as well is also uh, bring in some clarity anywhere from one to three K. And so right around, you know, two and a half is sounding really good. Let's kind of listen to what that sounds like. Background, while all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus. So I definitely think that adds a little more. Okay. And the next step is going to be taking out some mud and just some stuff that's helping it sound a little too harsh. So we want to write around anywhere from 300 to 800 hertz is kind of going to be the pocket where we want to listen. We can possibly sweep by turning up that band and sweeping to find the frequency. Mm. Um, this one is going to be 600 to 300 hertz right in there. Okay. So I'm actually going to make two EQ dips. One at 600 and one at 300. Focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background? While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the... And that's really just helping kind of clean up that as well. Yeah, definitely and, sounds clean, so. Absolutely. And if we need to add a little more fullness, right around 200 hertz is gonna be a good spot where we can boost just a little bit um, to help thicken the voice up. Background, while all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background, while all that stuff is really I yeah. think that sounds pretty good, what do you think? Yeah, that sounds really good. What does it sound like before and after? Let's check that out. Really important. 
audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background, while well, all that stuff is really important. Definitely made a huge difference. Yeah, wow. I can't wait to see what else we do because that already made a pretty big difference. <laughs> so the next thing I would do after that is I would reach for a compressor. And the reason you want to do that is because it's going to level out any peaks and transients as your voice gets louder and quieter and it will help to kind of squash that. So we can reach in here, go to our compressors, amplitude and compression right there. And we can use dynamics, dynamics processing, single band, tube, multi-band. Um, for this, we're just gonna use a tube compressor. Okay. As we go in here, we're gonna use a ratio of four to one, which is a pretty basic ratio. We can keep attack at 10 and release at 100 milliseconds. And the next thing we wanna do is gonna be to pull down the threshold so that the compressor actually grabs the audio as you're talking. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it. And so we don't wanna to grab too much, but we wanna grab anywhere between zero to negative six um, decibels. Oh, okay if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visual. You can even do multiple stages of compression so that um, one compressor is grabbing the attack, the more front end of the transients, and the second compressor is grabbing the back end of the audio and helping bring that up. So let's hear what that sounds like. Nice. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, Audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it. So let's hear what it sounds like before and after compression. Yeah. If not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it. If I am turning up the gain a little bit on that second one, but mm -hmm. we can actually hear that it is uh, grabbing it, grabbing your peaks and transients. Yeah. So as you hit harder, the one compressor is grabbing it and the other one's doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's sounding good. <laughs> well, those two things already made a pretty big difference. So what's the next thing that you would look for? Yeah, the next thing after that is really going to be, I'm going to look for a de mm. and that is to take away some of the S's and the consonants where you have the t's, that kind of thing, and it helps just smoothen out the vocal a little more. Okay. So I come in here, let's see, where is it? Oh, so I would come in here again under amplitude and compression, and I would hit this de right here and drag it. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, so what we're listening for right here is going to be just those consonants. And as you hear them, you're going to notice that they are ducked when you pull down the threshold. Okay. On is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background. While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on... And then if you feel like that's too much, you can always back off. Hmm, okay. Nice. So we've gone through analyzing your audio, adding EQ, compression, now D, adding a de -er for those constants that you mentioned. What's the last step that you look for? The last step would be really just making sure it's at the proper volume level and limiting that. And that's so to make sure that it doesn't peak even if it gets slammed up really loud. So I would come in here again to our amplitude and compression and I would throw the limiter in there. 
And from here we can adjust how much we want to boost into the limiter as well as the maximum amplitude as the threshold that it can actually go to. So how do you know where you want your audio to be at and things like that? Is there like a certain level you look for? Yeah, right around anywhere from 12 to negative six is usually a really good spot where it's sitting and it's at a really um, nice loud level and it's not too quiet. Hmm. Okay. If not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background? While all that stuff is really important, audio is half of it. Nice. So what if you recorded your audio like a little too low? Like I remember in this case, we actually recorded the audio from the boom mic, maybe a little bit lower than we should have. And now after all this processing and bringing it back to the level that we needed, we're getting a little bit more of the room noise. Yeah. So what could we do, you know, as like a bonus or like as an additional step to kind of get rid of that room noise if we have that? Absolutely. So you can definitely go in under noise reduction and you can use denoise, dehum, uh, depending on if it's like a AC noise you can hear in the background or if it's just in general, just a room noise. And both of those will kind of do a different trick. Hmm. So the denoiser is really gonna be able to focus on certain areas of the EQ, and the dehummer is really gonna help remove octaves of frequencies of that humming noise. Hmm. So when I first got into making videos, is half of it, if not more important, whenever you're making professional videos. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visual. So really we hear that very specific, and it's right around 200, but that, that hum is gonna be right about 238 hertz, which is also very close to the beefiness that we're adding of your voice. So let's hear what that sounds like before and after. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background? While well, all that stuff is really important, Audio is half of it. If so you can definitely tell a big difference there. Yeah, definitely. So when would you use a denoiser? What kind of situation would that be better for? If I was getting a lot of high-end reflections, possibly even some reverb, uh, that would definitely be a place that I would reach for that. And oh. the great thing about that denoiser is it allows you to say, hey, do I want to focus on the mid-range? Where's your vocal intelligibility lying? It's right here, or is it more on the high-end that you're trying to save? or is it more on the low end? Nice. Okay, so now that we fully have processed this, why don't we listen to what it sounded like before and after to really see what we did? Absolutely. This is it before. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background, while well, all that stuff. So when I first got into making videos, all I would focus on is the visuals. How does the scene look, the lighting, the background, while well, all that stuff is really important, Audio is half of it. If yeah, that's a big difference. Absolutely. Huh. So that is pretty much the five step process that you pretty much use to analyze any type of audio, huh? Yeah, absolutely. And I know it can seem, I feel like it might seem easy or difficult, but I guess it can be pretty tricky when you have to just do this process for like different mic scenarios, you know, it's gonna always change. But as long as you follow this process, you're probably gonna get like pretty good sounding audio, right? Absolutely. And that's why I'm so excited on the preset pack that we launched in the last video because we essentially did all the hard work for you. You know, we tested out different mics. Here, let's look into some other examples where we can actually see the presets working in real time. So why don't we just bring up another example and drag it on and see how it sounds. Absolutely. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to a new video. So 2022, I'm excited because it's a fresh year, fresh start, new opportunities and new vids. Man, just one click and it sounds pretty good. Essentially all five steps that we just did, but already, you know, already done. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely a big time saver and they work really well. You know, we went through different mic setups like lav mics, boom mics, on camera, even mics, or even audio recorded from your iPhone and just went ahead and pre-processed all that audio and essentially using that same step process to make sure it sounds really good. So why don't we check out another one like this podcast audio? This is a test of the Shure SM7B microphone. It's very well known in the podcasting world. It's a great microphone that is a dynamic mic, so it's going to be great for the directional audio. 
Yeah, that sounds so good. <laughs> and that's yeah. a super popular mic, especially for podcasting. So it sounds great, you know. And that was one click, drag and drop. And so that's why I just, like I mentioned, so stoked on these. If you guys are interested, you can find them in the link below. But we've gone ahead and just processed and tested out a bunch of mic setups, different mics that we pot that we use, like road mics, boom mics, uh, lav mics, different versions of these presets as well and sound effects so i definitely think you guys will love them and just yeah super stoked on them <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this video guys leave a like if you enjoyed comment down your thoughts let us know if you have any other audio tips would love to check them out subscribe if you haven't already we'd love for you guys to be part of the channel and we'll see you guys in the next video see ya